Hi everyone, welcome to Warp 3D tutorial part 2 from Not Real Engineering. In this video, we are going to perform crystal plasticity simulation using Warp 3D software. Now I am assuming you know about crystal plasticity theory. I have a separate video series named crystal plasticity basics. If you are not familiar with any crystal plasticity terms, please check out those videos first. And I also have tutorials about how to do crystal plasticity simulations using other softwares such as Damask or Abacus. If you are more comfortable with those softwares, you can check out those videos as well. Warp 3D is very robust non-linear finite element solver and I made a separate video about introduction of Warp 3D and how to run a basic example as well. So in this tutorial, we are going to focus only on crystal plasticity. So if you are not familiar with how to run example using Warp 3D, please check out this video first and then you can continue with this video. So let's begin. Today we are going to solve this simple example. Over here, we have only two elements. The red numbers indicate node labels and dimensions are also given over here. All the dimensions will correspond to this set of units. We are going to use something called Bose hardening in this example. As I said, this is just two element model and one end of this bar is fixed and we will apply load on another end. These four nodes at the bottom are fixed and we will apply displacement boundary condition on this top four nodes. I'm going to use material as steel. CP model is voice hardening and we are going to obtain a stress strain curve for different crystal orientations. Now what this crystal orientation means? In any crystal plasticity simulations, there are always two coordinate systems which are totally independent of each other. What I mean by that is, first you have this coordinate system shown in black color. This is your global coordinate system. The load application, the coordinates of node, everything will be according to this global coordinate system, which is in black color. For example, the coordinates of this node 10 will be 1, 1, 1, which is according to this black coordinate system. Now in crystal plasticity, we consider the lattice structure and we consider it on microscopic level. So this is the example of BCC unit lattice. Now this lattice will have its own coordinate system, which is shown by red color. Again, X, Y, Z. Now the size of this element is 1 by 1 by 1 mm and size of this unit lattice is in angstroms. So there are going to be thousands or even millions of these unit cells in one single finite element. So we have to decide what is the relation between this global coordinate system and this crystal coordinate system. So this unit lattice can be exactly like this as it is shown over here or it can be tilted at some angle. So that is we have to assign. So there should be some relation between these two coordinate systems and that is given by Euler angles. Now in this tutorial, what we will do is we will assign some orientation first. This is actually the orientation we will assign first. We will match the crystals coordinate system to the global coordinate system. You can see Y is in same direction, X is in same direction, Z is in same direction. And then we will rotate this crystal and we will have these three separate cases. First, we will rotate it along Z axis. Then we will rotate it around X axis. And finally, we will rotate it around Y axis and we will check how the stress strain curve changes when we rotate just the crystal orientation. We will not change anything in the boundary condition or finite element domain. We will change only crystal orientation and we will see some interesting results in that. This is the voice hardening model which is implemented in Warp 3D already. I am not going into detail of this model. I have a separate video which explains this. So please check out that video. And in Warp 3D, this model is given by these equations. So I took these screenshots from Warp 3D manual. You can also find it out on Warp 3D website. And this is how we have to mention crystal plasticity parameters in our input file. So this is the screenshot of exact file which we will use for our simulations. This table is actually very important. It shows the syntax for each material parameter. For example, in this equation, you can see M over here. Then you can go to this table. You can find M over here and then you can find its syntax over here. So this is voice M. And then in this input card, you can find where is voice M. So voice M is here. So we are defining its value as one. Similarly, you can find all the quantities using this table. Let's just quickly go over these keywords. First, you have to define crystal. In crystal properties, you have to define which type of crystal structure it has. In this case, it is BCC. We are using Vos hardening model. So you can see Vos hardening model supports FCC, BCC and BCC48. It does not support HCP. 
Then elastic type, I'm using isotropic. Hardening model is voice. E is nothing but Young's modulus. NU is Poisson's ratio. And then these parameters, N, theta zero, M, tau V, tau Y, and gamma bar. You can find all of them over here. And all of them come from these two equations. Once you define crystal properties, you have to define a material. I'm naming that material as CP underscore option one. And here you will give some other properties of materials such as rho is its density. CP means it has crystal plasticity. So we have to define crystal over here and crystal type one is nothing but this crystal type. You can define multiple crystals and multiple materials as well. And most importantly, crystal orientation is defined over here using Euler angles. In this example, we are not going to do homogenization. Therefore, crystal input is single, but var 3D support homogenization as well, which we will see in next videos. Now let's go to the example. Now I have saved these two files in one directory and I'm accessing that directory through terminal over here. This warp 3 d INP is input file. Let me quickly show you what is inside warp 3 d input file. First, we are defining crystal. Then we are defining this material. Then our model consists 12 nodes and two elements, which is very simple model. Here we are defining element type and we are assigning material to those elements. These are the node coordinates. These are element connectivities. This is where we define the nodes in each element. Now this line is just to create a flat output files, which can be visualized in para view. Then the boundary conditions, we are fixing the bottom face and we are applying displacement boundary condition on the top face in positive Y direction. Loading is applied in terms of 50 steps. These are some analysis parameters and output commands are given in this file, which is over here. This is just to make input file clean. You can of course include everything in one single file. And finally, we are solving it for all 50 steps. Once you have these two files ready, you just have to submit the job using this command. If you don't know this command, check out my first video and you will see bunch of files are getting created over here and we will have all the files over here. Now, next step is to create a para view compatible file using these flat output files. For that, just copy paste all these files into this directory in warp 3D folder. When you download the warp 3D, you will have this folder over here. Copy paste all the files over here. Again, go into this directory from your command line. This directory has a Python code named warp 3D to ex double I. We will run that Python code. When you run that Python code, first it will ask you to name the output file. I'm going to name the output file as warp 3D CP example one. Then it will ask you to tell the name of flat output file, which is warp 3D underscore results dot txt. And finally, it will ask you the path of that file, which is in this directory because we copied it over here. Then say no and no. And after this, it will create a dot exo file. This you can visualize in para view. Then open para view and just drag this file over here. Say apply. And you can see our two element model, whatever you want to visualize, let's say displacement or reaction forces, everything you can load it into your model and then you can choose displacement from here. I wrote a short MATLAB script, which will go through all these files and create a stress strain graph. So if I run this file, you will see the stress strain graph is created. Now the aim is to rotate the crystal. What I mean by that is this Euler angle, what we defined over here, we will change this and we will solve the example again and we will get stress strain graph again. So I did this for a bunch of different angles and these are the results. In first case, I am rotating the crystal along Z axis. This red coordinate system, I am rotating along this Z axis. So the angle between red X axis and black X axis will be theta. And similarly, angle between red Y axis and black Y axis will be theta. You can imagine this as means we are tipping it over along this edge. Now, if we do that and we obtain stress strain curve for different angles of this theta, what we observe is after rotation of 90 degree, the material response is same as initial orientation. This is due to the symmetry of PCC structure. This loading direction is going to remain same. So although we are rotating this crystal, loading will be always in this Y direction, which is with respect to global coordinate system. Therefore, as we rotate the crystal, we can see the material is strengthening. When we rotate it by 15 degree, we are seeing higher yield strength. And as we keep on rotating, we will get the highest value of strength at rotation 45 degree. And after that, it will start to decrease again. And when we rotate it by 90 degree, it will match the response of initial orientation. 
therefore highest strength is at 45 degree rotation and lowest is at zero or or any rotation which is multiple of 90 degrees because after every 90 degree rotation we are going to get the same structure so if you see just the front face if you rotate this by 30 degree the front face will be something like this and still we are applying load in this direction therefore its response is changing now in next case we are going to rotate it along x direction as shown over here the red x and black x remain same and we are rotating it along x direction now in this case we will observe exactly same behavior this is because the loading is in positive y direction so loading is over here now if you rotate this crystal along this z direction or along this x direction it is not going to change anything so we'll get the same response the strength will increase as we rotate the crystal it will be maximum at 45 degree and again it will decrease and it will reach the initial value when rotation is 90 degrees now just to compare if we are getting the same results or not what i did is i compared the stress strain graph for 15 degree rotation along x axis and along z axis and you can see over here we are getting exactly same stress strain curve now in the last case we are going to rotate it along y direction now in this case the direction of loading is same as the axis along which we are going to rotate the crystal therefore now if you rotate this along this y axis and if you are seeing along the direction of loading you are not going to see any change therefore if you rotate it by 0 degree or 90 degree or 45 degree you are going to get exactly same stress strain graph this is due to coincidence of axis of rotation with loading direction i know it is kind of difficult to imagine when i am explaining it in two dimensions but in future if i ever make 3d animation videos then definitely my first video will be on this topic because in 3d animation it will be much more easier to imagine what i'm saying but i hope you understood what i said and if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below if you like this video please show your support by subscribing to this channel which will give me motivation to create more educational videos like these you can also go to channels playlist tab and here you can see all the videos with similar topics combined together for example let's say if you are interested in ansys tutorials you can go to this ansys tutorial playlist and see all the videos from this playlist all the codes and files which i use for these videos are also available for you to directly download from this channel's github profile the link of this profile is given in the description box below if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below and as always thank you for watching Thank you.